All right, ladies and gents, in today's video, we're going to talk about something that's sometimes overlooked when fishing for trout, using bobbers. And I'm not talking about slip bobbers. I'm talking about the good old conventional bobbers. So let's see how we do. Now we want to talk about when and where to use this uh, this technique, and the answer is everywhere. <laughs> um, uh, as you know, and if you watch the videos, uh, I always like to say because it's uh, in my opinion it's true. The uh, trout at these lakes they like to stay up close, uh, regardless if it's warm or cold. Um, they usually don't venture out into the deeper water. Um, the only time I really run into that where I really got to make a long cast is if I'm if I'm in a cove that's relatively shallow. Then sometimes they'll be out further uh, to get away from the bank. But uh, for the most part, um, trout don't don't hang out in the deeper water out here in Southern California. So most of the time they're within 30 feet and 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 right up to the bank. Sometimes they're only about five feet out. And I always talk about the curtain. And the curtain is the area of, uh, of water where you can no longer see into the water. You know, when the water's clear and you can see in for a little bit and then it just gets too dark and it kind of looks like there's a curtain there. Usually when I'm casting anything bait and weight, whether it's a bobber or a Carolina rig, I try to throw it a foot or two just past that, that curtain, if you will. And that's where the fish tend to swim back and forth. And, and I found it's, it doesn't matter if it's like now it's hot during summertime. Uh, or if it's uh, middle of uh, January and it's cold, the trout tend to stay up close that are feeding. Sometimes you'll see fish, like I'll be out in the in the boat and I'll get a lot of contacts out deeper at different lakes. Lots of times the, the trout are there, but those aren't the ones that are actively feeding. Or uh, when I'm at the mud hole, um, you'll see a lot of the, the times I'm, I'm drop shotting and I'm hooking up. Usually it's in the afternoon as the trout in the morning started off there, might have got a couple. Then around lunchtime, it got a little warmer, so sometimes the trout head out a little bit further, but they don't seem to bite as well. Um, and then in the afternoon, they come back in to feed. So they're back in that, that, that area, that, that 30 to, to 15 to 5 feet right off the bank, and that's where they want to feed at. All right, now let's talk about rods and reels. Um, uh, any, any ultralight combo you got to fish for trout will work. Um, you don't need any specialized gear for this. It's just a bobber and some bait. <laughs> So uh, what I use is a uh, uh, Daiwa Spinmatic rod. It's an eight foot uh, ultralight rod and a, a Legalis 1000 series spinning reel. Uh, for line, I just have on the five pound Runkle uh, flora co coat on here, but you can use your, your four pound. You can even use two, some of you guys like that. Uh, but I recommend at least four pound or like I like this, this five and I, sometimes I'll even use the six pound uh, Runkle uh, flora coat because it's real strong and the fish can't see it. Um, but you're not going to be uh, working these bobbers, producing any action for the most part. Um, you can, if the bite's slow, you know, slowly reel it in a little bit and let it sit and slowly reel it in. But for that, you don't need a specialized rod uh, or anything. Um, you, can, you can even get away with a shorter rod, like a, like a six foot or a five foot, because you're only going to be making very short casts and keeping this very close to shore. All right, guys, here is a variety of uh, bobbers out here. Um, these are all your conventional bobbers all the way up to your, uh, your slip bobbers. Now slip bobbers are not really going to get into today. Um, I'll put a link up, up here uh, if you want to learn more about slip bobbers, show you a couple videos I did on how to fish those. Uh, but we're not really worried about those today. Those are more for a, a deep water technique. We're just going to concentrate on these uh, uh, basic old school bobbers. Where they got a, a, a clip in the top, a clip on the bottom. Uh, they're all different shapes and sizes. You've got some of these rattle bobbers will work or some of these that have uh, they're oblong and they have some uh, some weight at the bottom so you can cast them a little bit further. Same clips, all that or uh, these dudes that uh, you can use at night. You can put a little glow stick in them. They're kind of cool. Uh, uh, but you don't, you don't need anything tricky. These are just the little basic bobbers you can buy over at Walmart or anywhere. Uh, bag for like a buck or two. Um, 
uh, and just clip on your line and a hook and a, a little bit of bait and throw it on out there uh, uh, and wait for uh, wait for that bobber to move a little bit and see if you got a fish. So uh, now let's uh, show you exactly how I rig these up in uh, for all different kinds of baits. All right, guys, show you the uh, uh, gear you're going to need. Um, basically, a bobber, obviously, uh, hooks. Standard trout hooks. Um, I like the 18 treble hook. I'm using a doe bait like power bait. Uh, you got your number 10 mosquito hook, or even you can go up to a number 8 mosquito hook uh, because it, using this technique, it's different from a Carolina rig. You don't necessarily want your bait to float. But um, if you're using power bait, you know power bait obviously floats. Um, so I get a lot of questions on even with the slip bobber rigs, like, well, how do you how do you keep the uh, the bait from not floating? and uh, uh, simply use these little pinch weights. You just put one of these pinch weights down from your bobber. Usually I put it about four or five inches up from my, uh, my bait hook uh, and that will keep your floating bait down far enough that it won't tangle up your rig and uh, the trout don't seem to mind it. Um, because what you have to remember is when using this technique early in the morning um, there's usually no wind but there is some amount of current um, in every lake. Uh, so it will be moving a little bit. So it's not going to, the, the line is not going to just sit up and tangle on itself all the time. It happens, but it's very rare. Uh, so you can use any type of floating bait. Just remember to put on, uh, some kind of, uh, pinch weight to hold it down at the level that you want it to be at. Okay. Now how these bobbers work, there's a clip on the bottom here and a clip on the top. So uh, the way I normally do it is I always clip the bottom first. So what you want to do is put your finger over this top bit so you hold that clamp down and there's a spring in here and it will pop that bottom clip out. So what you want to do, get some line out here, is hold that, that, that uh, bit down with your finger, push and expose that clip and then you hook the line in there. You can wrap it if you want. Um, usually if I hook it, just, just hook it in there uh, once and hook the top one, the bobber does not move. Um, and then what you do is same, almost the opposite is you put your thumb on the bottom, push down to expose that top clip, and then wrap the top part of the line around that clip. Just like that. And see me pulling on it, it ain't moving. Okay, and then you set it to your desired depth what I usually like to start with is uh, about five feet down from the bobber. So I have about five feet of line down from the bobber uh, and I throw it out about 15 feet. And you got to watch the bobber uh, first thing to see if it's, if it's dragging. If the bobber doesn't move at all, you're probably either stuck in some weeds or you're stuck on the bottom. So you may have to shorten up your leader a little bit. But the idea is you want to keep this just above the bottom, like a few inches above the bottom. And something about this uh, as opposed to Carolina rigs, I've seen it many times where the trout are there, they'll hit this bobber real fast. But if you have a Carolina rig out with the same bait, virtually the same depth, they don't seem to hit it. And I don't know if it's because there's slight movement with this rig or what the deal is, but they really, really seem to like uh, bait presentations on, on, a, on a bobber as opposed to a Carolina rig. And, and the only thing I think of, it's got to be the movement. Now, when you're using floating bait, like power bait, like see I got a number 10 mosquito hook on here, and you can easily put a ball of uh, power bait on here. Uh, I usually tend to go with the, the treble hooks when I switch to power bait, just because it stays on there better. Um, but easily you can put it on here. But what I'll do is I'll come up a few inches, and I just get one of these BBs, or you can get any size pinch weight you want, and put a little pinch weight on. Okay, now what that does, it's going to hold your floating bait down, so it's only going to float up about that much. So, with the current and everything, it's going to be moving around like this. It's not necessarily going to get up and tangle up in your line. It is possible, but, but it's rare. Um, uh, I do it this way all the time. I'll fish power bait on a bobber all the time, or my slip bobbers, and uh, it's very rare I get a tangle. Usually, it, uh, the weight will just hold it down, and there, usually there's enough just natural current in the water to keep it from tangling up. All right, now let's talk about bait. Um, I have a variety of baits here that I use. Uh, this is a little rubber worm, but this is to represent your live bait, like your crawlers or your uh, 
uh, mealworms and, and, and things like that. Crickets even will work. Um, I got some power eggs, different sizes, power bait, the old standby, and uh, uh, some Golden State uh, mice tails. Now I'll show you how I hook these up. Now with the uh, mice tails and the power bait and even some of the power eggs, they float naturally. So again, you want to put that pinch weight on your line so it doesn't float up to the, to the surface of the water. Um, but the way I like to hook these, these mice tails come in through the bottom here and up towards the head. So I slide it right in there. So it goes up into the head here and then I turn it and I push it out and I pull the eye into the body so you have the hook exposed just like that. And that's the same way I'll fish these or hook these up on a Carolina rig. And I usually have better luck with hookups. Because um, sometimes with these artificials, um, when the fish bite it, sometimes it'll pull the bait down over the barb of the hook. And you'll get a good bite, but you won't get the fish. Um, I found hooking them up this way, which is kind of backwards the way some, most people do it. Um, you get a lot more hookups because that hook's really exposed. And the, and the fish don't seem to, uh, to care too much about it. Alright, now how I hook up night crawlers. Um, this obviously isn't the size of the night crawler. I just don't happen to have any night crawlers. Uh, I usually like to put about a third of the crawler on. And you can hook these any way you want. Some guys like to fish the entire night crawler, and that's great. Whatever, whatever works for you. But I've found that, that only about a third of it works, works real well, and that's all you need. And you can uh, uh, keep from running out of bait as quick. But uh, uh, I usually just, just give it two hooks. So I'll put it one through the side, and I'll double it over. And hook it back through just kind of like that and it sits obviously a, a real crawler is a little bit thicker but it sits as a nice little ball on there and then I'll throw some uh, some spray on there garlic or anise you know whatever I have handy uh, and fish it just like that now another neat little trick that I learned is you, before you put your third of a night crawler on you can put a little color on and that's where these power eggs come in so I'll take one of these and I'll thread this on first. And I'll thread it above the hook. And then I'll put my crawler on. And I'll pull this back down just to where it's right at the top of the hook. So now you have a good little bit of color contrast and something a little bit different than just a plain old worm on there. And you can do it with any of these uh, obviously these eggs come in a variety of colors um, so you can do it with any color you want and find out what color they're hitting on plus you got that that added bonus of the night crawler which you know they like those but usually the color uh, uh, if you can figure out what color they're hitting on that day will really provoke the bite all right now with power bait um, I do it pretty simple I don't get too fancy I don't make a lot of different uh, shapes and all that kind of stuff uh, once in a while I will if they aren't biting but uh, typically I just make a little ball and I just make enough to cover the hook and I'll pull off any excess that I have and when using uh, a regular mosquito hook you can fish lots of power baits very successfully with a regular mosquito hook um, I make sure I really press it on there because it doesn't hold on as well as a treble um, but I just kinda Press it on there just so it covers the entirety of the hook. And there you have it. It's not really a ball. It's kind of more of a football. Um, but that's about how I do it. Now, one trick I've found to help keep this bait on here better is before you cast out, is rest it in the water for a little bit. And what happens is the water seems to dissolve the top layer and it kind of fuses it together. So it makes it hold on the hook a little bit better. So I give it a few seconds in the water before I make my cast. And uh, especially when using mosquito hooks. Uh, that tends to hold the power bait on a little bit better. All right, guys, now that I've shown you how to set this up, let's go on out to the lake for a little practical application. Let's see how good this technique actually works. Nope. Build night crawler into the bobber trick.
To the right there. Junkie bro. That was a little bitty fella. Little state stalker. Now I show you the rig I'm using. The standard bobber, about a uh, five foot leader, down to a number 10 uh, mosquito hook. And I got about a third of a night crawler on there. And I got a little split shot to help hold it down. And we're throwing it out about uh, 15, 20 feet. See if we can get some milk. All right, ladies and gents, there you have it. Uh, great little technique uh, uh, that sometimes uh, even I forget about. <laughs> uh, sometimes I get uh, get hung up with all the latest uh, ways to catch trout. You, sometimes you forget about just going back to the basics, and sometimes uh, uh, that works better than a lot of the newer, fancier techniques. So uh, uh, make sure early morning hours, uh, best time to do it. You can do it in the afternoon. Uh, but I prefer the morning just because uh, there's less wind. You know, more wind makes it a little bit more difficult fishing a bobber. So, uh, as always, uh, if you want to get some of the uh, RHA spoons I use, uh, I'll put the website right here. Uh, give them a look. They're, they're outstanding, especially uh, in the summertime uh, up in the local mountain lakes. Trotter just, just love them spoons. Uh, and the uh, Golden State Fishing uh, products I use, uh, I'll have the website right here. If you use uh, code CSPANKER at checkout, you get 10% off. So give those a look as well, and uh, uh, make sure you check out my uh, my Instagram at Seaspanker Outdoors. Leave lots of questions or comments uh, on this video or any others. Uh, make sure too, um, I have a whole uh, I'll put a link here, a whole how-to section on the channel uh, uh, that shows a lot of the techniques. A lot of times you guys ask questions, and I've already done a whole video on it. <laughs> so make sure you give that a look. Uh, uh, if not, uh, just leave me a question. I'm happy to answer it. Uh, and until next time, tight lines. Bye.